let me take you through the interface of Affinity Photo, showing you where all the major tools and functionality can be accessed from. First, when you run the app, you will be presented with the New Document dialog. This also functions as a way of managing your account, opening a document file, accessing recent documents, loading templates, and downloading sample documents where you can explore the layer stack and see how the compositions are created. I'm going to open a recent document here. The document opens in what we refer to as the document view, which occupies the middle of the interface. To the left, we have the tools panel. This contains all the tools that can interact directly with content on the document view. For example, there is the crop tool, paintbrush tool, and clone brush tool. Certain tools have a small triangle icon in the bottom right. These are tool groups, and you can click and hold to reveal the other tools in the group. Alternatively, you can double click on the tool to reveal the tool group, or you can precision click on the triangle icon. I'll switch back to the view tool using H on the keyboard. This is a useful shortcut to memorize, as the view tool allows you to click drag and pan around your document easily. You can combine this with the Option key plus mouse wheel to zoom in and out on Mac, or on Windows, you would hold the Control key whilst using the mouse wheel. To fit to screen, you can use Command 0 on Mac, Control 0 on Windows. Next, in the top left, we have the Personas. These are essentially different workspaces for different tasks or workflows. Various video tutorials will explain and use these different personas. But at a glance, we have the main photo persona, which is what we are in currently. This is where most of your time will be spent, as it contains the main editing workspace with the layers panel, tools, and other options such as adjustment layers and filters. The liquify persona lets you perform mesh distortions to the currently selected layer and is covered in the Liquify video tutorial. The Develop persona is primarily for raw development and is covered in the raw development video tutorial. The Tone Mapping persona is for tone mapping high dynamic range imagery and is covered in the HDR merging and tone mapping video tutorial. And finally, the export persona is for finer control over exporting regions and separate layers of your document. This is covered in the export persona video tutorial. Along the top toolbar, there are various options pertaining to image editing, such as automatic corrections, selection options, quick masking, snapping, assistant options, which helps you set default layer behaviors, layer ordering options, layer insertion options, and finally, the account settings, which will reopen the dialog we started with initially, where you can download additional content for the Affinity apps. On the right-hand side, we have a series of panels that contain various functionality. Collectively, we refer to these panels as a studio. This is the right studio. The default choice of panels is quite minimalistic, so as not to be overwhelming for a new user. However, you can easily enable additional panels by going to the window menu up here. For example, if you come from a video editing background and prefer using various scope waveforms for color grading and tone analysis, you can show the scope panel. This appears in the top right panel group next to the histogram panel. You may also want to create multiple revisions of your image and store them within one document. So for this, you would use the snapshots panel, which appears down in the bottom right panel group. Panels can easily be dragged out of a panel group and floated, then resized horizontally and vertically as well. There is also the concept of a left studio, but no panels on this studio are shown by default. I can, however, enable the library panel, which contains installed macro categories. Macros are repeatable operations that can speed up workflows. I can also enable the assets panel, 
which allows you to create and install reusable assets. Assets can be created from any layer type, so you can have a mixture of raster and vector content that you can easily drag onto your document. Floating panels can be docked again, so for example, I might click drag the layers panel and offer it to this panel group, then release the mouse button once I have positioned it. Next, I'll show you the context toolbar, located here. This changes depending on the tool you have selected. For example, if I use B to select the paintbrush tool, I now have settings specific to this tool, such as brush width, hardness, stabilizer options, symmetry, blend mode, and wet edges. If I switch to the pen tool using P, I now have fill and stroke colors, stroke width settings, node modes, and more. Another aspect of the interface that changes depending on the selected tool is the hint line down here. This details any keyboard modifiers you can use with the tool to achieve different behaviors or actions, and is worth observing as it helps to expand the functionality of the tool. I'll use H to switch back to the view tool for now. The top menu contains various important options. Application preferences can be found on the App Title menu if you're on Mac OS, or under the Edit menu on Windows. The Document menu contains several useful functions, such as Document Resizing and Resampling, Color Format and Profile Conversion, and Layer Stack Flattening. The Layer menu gives you access not just to adjustment layers, but also live filter layers. These are brilliant for non-destructive workflows as they allow you to apply filters such as Unsharp Mask, Gaussian Blur, Perspective Transformation, and more as layers, rather than having to apply them destructively from the Filters menu. The Select and Arrange menus contain various options for layer selections and layer arrangement. What is quite useful, however, is that keyboard shortcuts are shown next to the various operations giving you a quick reference for speeding up your workflows. The View menu is helpful for setting up grids and guides should you need them, and also lets you configure the toolbar, which as seen earlier, runs along the top here, and the Tools, which refers to the Tools panel on the left. As we also saw earlier, the Window menu lets you show and hide various panels that contain functionality. It also lets you bring up the Resource Manager, which helps to maintain embedded and external links to imported images and other content within your document. Finally, pressing Tab on the keyboard hides the entire user interface, allowing you to focus on your document view without any distractions. If you have accidentally pressed this and are wondering how to restore the interface, now you know. Simply press Tab to bring everything back again. And that was an overview of Affinity Photo's user interface. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.